avant-garde films or experimental films have pushed the boundaries and disregarded Hollywood conventions since the early days of cinema and throughout the 20th century, and in doing so influenced filmmakers and studios to adapt new conventions, narrative styles, cinematic looks, and film themes that emerge out of this movement. However, does contemporary avant-garde cinema still challenge Hollywood in its set ways? And if so, how successful is it at changing contemporary mainstream Hollywood productions? In this video essay, we will be looking at a few contemporary English language avant-garde films made in the last 10 years to examine whether they are influencing Hollywood or not. The 2017 animated feature film Loving Vincent, created by co-writers and directors Dorata Koval and Hugh Welchman, is the first of its kind avant-garde style film. It was produced with a live action camera, and additionally the film was then frame by frame oil painted on canvases by 85 artists using the same artistic techniques as Van Gogh himself. This process took six years to complete and was described by Hugh Welchman as definitely without a doubt the slowest form of filmmaking ever devised in 120 years. While all major animation studios in Hollywood have moved away from traditional animation in favour of computer-generated 3D animation, Loving Vincent makes a bold statement about how important art history is to our understanding of what is beautiful and worthy of being produced. Despite the financial and economic challenges the film faced in its production, its commercial and critical success went on to show that Hollywood's desire to fast produce animation has left behind an art form which still has many techniques to explore. The Australian German film Manifesto, produced in 2015 for viewing at cinemas and premiering as a feature film in 2017 at Sundance, is an avant garde film that takes extracts from historical manifestos and adds them as a voiced over monologue to scenes set to complement the content of manifestos being read. Although this setup does not provide a narrative in the traditional sense, the combination of imagery and spoken words forces the audience to see a set of stories unfold to 12 characters all played by the same actress Kate Blanchett. Manifesto demonstrates the audience's ability to find a narrative in a structure that is in stark contrast to Hollywood's linear narratives and other forms of narratives used in mainstream films. Lars von Trier's final film in his depressing trilogy, Nymphomaniac, running at 325 minutes uncut, does follow a linear narrative, and many other conventions that now can be considered to be belonging to the avant-garde genre. Where it does, however, challenge the contemporary mainstream film conventions is in its portrayal of sex and violence. Using camera movements and uncut scenes of violence and nudity, the film demonstrates how a film can capture the aspects with realism, where the audience doesn't feel they have been exposed to a camera trick. The themes of genre, representation, and vilification of women with sexual drives are demonstrated in the film in a way mainstream Hollywood would not attempt. 2014's Boyhood is arguably the most successful avant-garde film of all time, winning the Academy Award for Best Picture, the film was filmed over 12 years, following the same actor as he grew up. The director would write the script for the following year after looking at what he'd shot the year prior. Seeing a young adolescent grow into early adulthood was a unique experience caught for the first time on film, and this long process to film this experience was something that Hollywood studios would be very cautious about at the time, given all the financial and logistical challenges this creates. As these four films demonstrate, avant-garde is very much still present in English language cinema. However, experimental elements of the avant-garde films can also be found in contemporary Hollywood films, such as 1917 and Birdman. 
Movies made to seem as if they are shot in one shot, or movies like Arrival and Interstellar that play around with linear narrative in new forms. These films wouldn't be considered avant-garde on the basis that they are produced by major studios. However, the four movies we examine are also produced by some major names and have actors that are highly successful. The lines between experimental films and mainstream is blurry, yet also very much still there as avant-garde now is more of a genre of films. Loving Vincent's love for Van Gogh's art has not been able to put a massive break on Hollywood's love affair with 3D animation. However, traditional animation and experimenting with animation styles now continue with examples from 2018 Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Nymphomaniac might have been too graphical and pornographic when it was released, but audiences have since let franchises like Game of Thrones and Fifty Shades of Grey become household names. Boyhood, which started filming in 2001 and concluded in 2013, shares this time period with the filming and releasing of the Harry Potter series, which also filmed its actors for 12 years as they grew up. And as long franchises keep spending decades in Hollywood's future, and actors are being signed for 7 to 10 movies at a young age, we can only expect to see more of this trend in Hollywood. In conclusion, as the line between avant-garde and mainstream keeps blurring, there is still a very visible pioneering spirit alive and well within avant-garde film community. They are challenging and changing Hollywood as studios keep looking for the next big thing, so they can copy it and make new conventions.